Good morning, Cypress Creek. Why don't you guys uh, take a load off and just uh, stay seated for this song. Welcome back, Camel Walkers. We'd love for you to sing with us. Lord of all creation Of water, earth, and sky Heavens are your tabernacle Glory to the Lord on high God of wonders beyond our galaxy you are holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth. Celebrate the light when I stumble in the darkness. I will call your name by night. God, on this beyond our galaxy, you are holy. Your Majesty, You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, oh, oh. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Heaven and Good morning, Cypress Creek. order this morning, we're going to invite the children to an, 
Oh, there they are. Jennifer and Grace, please get with them because we are going to let you kids have some more time with the camel. And then you can go to Sunday school. And now please rise as you are able for a couple of hymns, the one beginning, I think everyone will know, How Great Thou Art. Throughout the universe displayed, then sings my soul, my soul, you got to be how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my soul, you got to be how great thou art. Great thou art. When the woods, the forest glades, I wander, I hear the birds sing sweetly through the trees. When I look down from love to mountain grandeur, I hear the brook. Feel gentle in the breeze Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee How great thou art, how great thou art Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee How great thou art, how great thou art think that God has so not sparing sent him to die I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin sings my soul my sin you got to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my soul you got to thee how great thou art how great thou art how great thou art how great thou of our God and King Lift up your voice and with us sing Oh, praise Him Alleluia Thou burning sun with golden beam Thou silver moon with softer gleam Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Things 
is the creator plus and worship him in humbleness oh praise him hallelujah praise praise the father rejoice ye lights of evening ye lights of evening find your voice Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him, hallelujah, hallelujah, the creator bless and worship him in humbleness we praise him hallelujah praise praise the father praise the son then praise the spirit through the to us that we might venture beyond the known and the comfortable. You provide us with light, with hints and nudges all along the way. Whenever we are distracted or made to feel uncertain about the next step, we pray that you will reveal yourself to us as we move through worship this day. We yearn to be encouraged. We want to be prompted by your grace and we desire to be more fully aligned with your goodness as embodied in Jesus. This is our prayer on this Epiphany Sunday. Amen. Well, good morning, church. I want you to take a moment and to turn around and give a wave, a smile to those around you as we are celebrating this amazing day in the life of the church. I'm going to go ahead and then invite you to be seated. It is Epiphany, which is, for those of you that maybe had heard the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, it is the twelve days after Christmas, the twelve days between Christmas and Epiphany. This is the day that we honor, that we celebrate the Magi, the wise men, coming and finding the Christ child. And it was 11 years ago that I said to this church, can we do this crazy idea, a camel walk? And the church said, why not? 
And so the one year we missed with the pandemic, today is the 10th anniversary of the Camel Walk. A lot of people have done that walk. A lot of community people have looked at us with some pretty strange faces. But that is absolutely fine. Uh, a couple things that I do want to lift up in the life of our congregation, and this first one is sort of business, and I apologize for that, but we are switching our internet and our phone system, and we've been without a phone here at the church, so if you tried to call, strange thing is you can actually leave a message, we just don't know you left a message, uh, but hopefully that will all be fixed in the next day or two. The good part is we are going to be saving the church quite a bit of money, which we are all in favor of that. So again, I apologize if you call, then you have not received a call back. Next Sunday, we are doing a ministry fair. Now, it will be a one-service Sunday once again in this space. Holy Grounds will be set up out here, but we will also have a number of ministries, ministries that happen in this space, on Sunday morning, morning or throughout the week, but also some ministries that happen beyond this place. Ministries that happen at places like Boys and Girls Country, or the Hope Center, or Sleep in Heavenly Peace. Things that you can connect yourself with beyond these walls. So I hope you will come. Ministry Fair will happen starting at 10 a.m. and will run and will still be happening out there even after worship. So come, ask questions, learn a little bit more, and find ways of connecting. And then the last thing I want to lift up, and you're going to have to put on your memory cap caps here because it's something that won't happen until the in uh, communion, actually. We have star words. I do not say star wars. Star words, we started this last year. It's a star down here on these tables that have a word. And we invite you to pick one of those up, either as an individual, if you want to pick up one as a family. And that is your word for the year. Last, last year, I picked up laughter. And it has sat right in front of me on my desk. And it has been a, a good reminder on a few occasions when maybe laughter was not on the forefront of my mind. But just pausing, and there are plenty of things to smile and chuckle about. So... Lots of uh, stars up here with words on them, and I invite you during communion as you come forward to pick one of those up. Well, today on Epiphany Sunday, we are looking at one of the traditional Epiphany texts, actually the text for this Sunday, Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12, and I invite you.
Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Where you move, I'll move. I will follow. Where you go, I'll go. Where you smile, I'll run. In this life, I lose. I will follow you. are good, all your ways are sure, I will trust in you alone, higher than my side, high above my life, I will trust in you alone, where you go, I'll go, where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move, I'll follow. Who you love, I'll love. Who you serve, I'll serve. In this life, I'll lose, I'll follow. You, you, light into the world, light into my life. I will live for you alone. You're the one I seek, knowing I will find all I need in you alone. You alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. Who you love, I love. Who you serve, I serve. In this life, I lose. I will follow you. Ooh, 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 ooh. In you is life everlasting. In you is freedom for my soul. In you this joy, an end in joy. And I will follow where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow whom you love, I'll love. Whom you serve, I'll serve. In this life, I lose. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. In you love, I'll love. Who you serve, I'll serve. In this life, I lose. I will follow you. I will follow. Navy for a little time with his family. I know parents, Keith and James, are glad to have him. And I think there was an announcement about an engagement, but well. If you'll join me in a word of prayer. What an amazing day, God. An amazing day made amazing by the gift that you have given this world. And we continue to travel along, move along in our own journey to discover anew this embodied gift of love. Now bless our time of worship this day. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Growing up, my older brother had telescopes. They were cool. When I was younger, 
I always wanted to play around with those telescopes. And sometimes he would let me, the less expensive ones. But I was less interested at that young age at looking at the star. I was more interested in focusing on the moon. I could get really close, see the craters. I was also fascinated by the phases of the moon. And I would watch them ever so closely, paying attention to how, as the days progressed, there would be this shift. And yet I'm not too sure at what age I really figured out that that was not the moon that was the source of the light. That in fact it was the sun, which from my vantage point was beyond my capacity to see in that moment, but was, in fact, the moon reflecting light. Of course, it wasn't helpful that the creation poem that we find in the first book of our Bibles, actually in the very first chapter of that first book, says that God made two powerful lights, the brighter one to rule the day and the other to rule the night. It implied that the moon, like the sun, was its own source of light. But thanks to science, we learned that it was not the source of its own light. And when we finally landed people on the moon, we then learned that the moon was not made of cheese. So a lot of great discoveries along the way. But with the Hubble telescope, and now the Webb Telescope, I am more and more fascinated by the stars. On a perfect stargazing night where there is not much light pollution that is causing distraction, the human eye can see approximately 3,000 stars in the night sky. You add a good pair of binoculars, and that 3,000 jumps up to nearly 10,000 stars. Of course, a handful of planets as well mixed in. But our galaxy, the Milky Way, has approximately 100 billion stars. And some scientists estimate that there may be as many as two trillion galaxies in the universe. Now, I'm not great with math, but multiplying 100 billion by 2 trillion, I'm not too sure what that number is, but it's got a lot of zeros and commas. That's a lot. Last February, February 2023, with the use of the Webb telescope, a press release announced that six new galaxies were discovered, one of them being 10 times larger than the Milky Way. 10 times! I mean, can you just imagine this? One day, someone is running their computer analysis using the Webb Telescope's data, and they say, huh, I think I just discovered one trillion new stars. For a scientist, I'm guessing that's a pretty good day. Coming to see things that we've never previously seen. Coming to recognize what we have never even imagined before. I want you to watch this video as I sort of talk over it. It's comparing the... Previously noticed. In the Epiphany story from Matthew's Gospel, the story of the Magi, 
these astrologers, which is probably what they were, coming from the east, making their way across a, a great distance, doing so based upon a star that they had noticed. In the last few hundred years, but especially in the last hundred years or so, there have been many attempts at explaining what that star might have been. Oh, it was a comet that we can't now explain. Oh no, it was the planets Jupiter and Saturn aligning on a peer, over a period of time. Some have said it was a supernova. It was probably none of those things. Now, people will often say that the Magi saw a very bright star. But in fact, nowhere in Scripture does it even say that the star was bright. That's just something we've sort of added to the story. Art, the art pieces of art that we see of this moment often depict this blinding light in the sky. But here's the part that you kind of need to put your seatbelts on. At no place in Scripture does it suggest that anyone else beyond the Magi actually saw the star. It may have appeared like any other star in the sky. And in verse 2, we read how the Magi came to Herod and asked, Where is the child to be born? And it was only then that Herod suggested, after consulting, that it was in Bethlehem. Growing up, I knew none of that. I just kind of had this one picture of what this epiphany was all about. Bright star, they followed it to Bethlehem, and everybody else said, Oh yeah, bright star, something important must be happening. But that's not what the scripture actually says. The Magi, these astrologers, were people who knew and understood the movement of the stars in the sky. For decades, maybe for centuries, people in their community had been looking. They noticed, they made notes, and suddenly they saw something in the midst of all those stars that caught their attention and yet this morning, I'm going to suggest that maybe no one else noticed. No one else saw what they were able to perceive. What happens when one person or just a handful of people notice something that no one else notices and they choose to pursue it with a passion? It often doesn't go well. I'm sure the Magi, leaving their hometown, saying, yeah, we were watching the stars and something appeared kind of out of whack. We were watching this one star, and I'm sure there were many who said, what? And then when they said, and we're going to try to figure this out, they were going, you're crazy. And then when the Magi arrived in Jerusalem, and shared their message, it said that everyone in Jerusalem, everyone in Jerusalem was concerned. Some translations say afraid. The religious leaders knew the prophecy that said Bethlehem, but I even imagine that they pictured something very different. And Herod and other political leaders were threatened by what was implied by the Magi's message and eventually would seek to crush the object of their journey. There are those who don't get it. There are those who are frightened by it. And there are always those who are willing to do whatever is necessary to stop it. The women's suffrage movement in this country is a rather complicated story. I think for many people, they kind of know, well, some women stood up, they marched, they got the right to vote. Well, that's true, but there's a whole lot more to the story. And when you add race to that 
conversation and that part of history, it becomes very complicated. Some of the key players in that movement, people whose names that you probably know, were opposed early on for black men to get the vote because they suggested that it would not be good for black men to be able to approve a law that would affect white women who did not have the vote. And then later, when they were doing marches, women of color were invited to march at the end, thinking that people who might be thinking about getting on board, well, if they only saw what were considered safe, white women, maybe this would be okay. It gets complicated all of a sudden, and yet there were certain figures, Mary Church Terrell and Ida B. Wells, who were very active not only in the suffrage movement, but in the anti-lynching movement and many other movements for justice in that time. They perceived something very different than the broad spectrum of people, and they kept their eyes on the prize despite what many were suggesting. There were those who didn't understand why women needed the vote, especially women of color. There were those who were frightened by the idea, and there were those who were willing to do whatever was necessary to stop it. Yet there were some, a handful, who continued to see something that no one else was able to perceive. A moment when maybe, just maybe, true equality would come. As people of faith, the better that we know the Jesus story, the better we are able to read the world around us. And if we are aware, and if we are reading through the lens of Jesus, we will begin to see things that we never previously had seen. And maybe, just maybe, we will begin to act upon those things, even when there is pushback. When you have those moments, when you perceive something you've never seen before and you think maybe this is a God thing, find a few friends who are also caught up in that vision. People who have a handful of gifts that they are willing to travel with and to use for the task at hand. Get after it. Jerry Jenkins, I don't know if Jerry is here this morning or not. Jerry is a member of this church and just completed, I think, his 17th or 18th year of working in our prison ministry, finally deciding it's time for him to step down. But I just want to honor that. Because over my years of ministry, not here at Cypress Creek, but in my years of ministry, when people have talked about a prison ministry, there are those who just don't get it. Why would you go into a prison? There have been those who've been frightened by the thought, I wouldn't go and I don't think you should go. And there are those who believe it should not happen. I've had people say to me, they're there for a reason, they deserve just to be there, we don't need to bring them anything good. I mean, that's totally ignoring what Jesus had to share about going and visiting those who are in prison. There have always been those who were able to perceive what others were unable to perceive, able to perceive a need, a hurt, an injustice, a brokenness. And in spite of what some people might have thought, oh, it's a waste of time, or I am frightened by that, or I think it just should stop, thank God that there have been faithful people who were undeterred, who continued to push ahead for what was right and what was good and what was just and what was kind, doing the things that Jesus did, all because they were able to read the world in a way that maybe others were not, able to perceive something that others were not wanting maybe to see. And because of that, they were able to work and act for justice 
against those who said, why are we doing this? Against those who said, ah, this makes me nervous. Others who said, no, this should stop, and yet they continued to be faithful to that thing that quite often in history has become what everybody has seen. But it was only because a few were willing to keep their eyes open, to open up their faith in a way, to perceive something that others had not. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that anybody but the Magi saw the star. And yet, can you imagine them on that journey saying, yeah, we're following this star, and people were going, what star? I, uh, there's tons of stars. What are you talking about? And they said, no, 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 you don't understand. We've got to do this. This is something important. We're pushing forward. And then when they showed up and mentioned where this new child, this new king of the Jews remembering that Herod considered himself king of the Jews. Do you understand how threatening that was? Oh, come back and tell me where you find him. Oh, he had alternative motives. And even when the Magi didn't show up after discovering the Christ child, he sought to crush it by killing every child under the age of two so threatened by this new thing that he could not perceive. As followers of Jesus, it is our task to keep our eyes and the eyes of our hearts open to see maybe what others do not, and then to act upon it. As we come to a time of prayer, I invite you to join me in our call to prayer you see on the screen. As we join the traveling stargazers throughout the centuries, seeking to find you, most merciful and gracious God, we pray for an openness, a willingness, an availability to your beckoning. For you are the one that continues to beckon us beyond what was perceived to be our limits, beyond the border of our own comfort. And yet you remain persistently patient in this work, continuing to call us forth. God, we pray that we look to those like the Magi, who continue to move forward in spite of what I can only imagine were many voices saying, don't do it. Oh, that's ridiculous. And yet they continued in faith. When we see something, God, that thing that you are putting before us, that maybe only a handful see, a call to act in a way that is kind and hopeful and filled with, with justice, we pray, O oh God, that we won't allow the naysayers to win the day, but that we will follow ever so faithfully. Follow in spite of not always knowing what the next step will bring. We offer these words in the name of the Christ child, the one the Magi found and honored. Amen. The author C.S. Lewis once said that if we find within ourselves a desire for which no earthly satisfaction can be found, perhaps this is evidence that we were made for another place altogether. I know it's risky, but I would like to slightly modify the words of C.S. Lewis and say that maybe we were made for another way of being, 
another way of living. But sometimes when we step into that new way of being, that new way of living our lives, it goes against what others see and believe and feel comfortable with, and there's pushback and there is challenge, and yet by faith we continue to press on. The band U2 has a song, I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For. And even though the title may sound like it's a song of despair, it appears to me to be a song describing a journey. A journey of learning and discovery and two steps forward and one step back, of growth and of continuing to press on. And when Bono sings the song, when he gets to the word still, he kind of holds that word just a little bit. And there are those that have suggested that he holds on to that word, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. It almost is a, providing a sense of hope. I'm not giving up on this. There, still, I still haven't found it, but I, I believe I will. And there are others that say that he pauses on that word still, reminding us to be still and to be open to possibilities that maybe we've not previously seen. Let's share together in that song. I've climbed highest mountains I have run through the fields only to be with you, only to be with you. I have run, I have called, I have scaled these city walls, these city walls, only to be with you. But still I haven't found what I'm looking for. Yes, still I haven't found what I'm looking for. I have kissed honey lips, felt this healing in her fingertips. It burned like fire. This burning desire Now I'm spoke with tongue of angel Now I have held the hand of the devil It was warm in the night I was cold as a stone but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. No, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I believe in the kingdom come that all these colors will bleed into one bleed into one yes I'm still running you broke the bones and you loose these chains carry this cross But 
still haven't found what I'm looking for. Oh, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. No, I still. found what I'm looking for on our journey to the table today we just might discover that uncertain, and a clear depiction of God's love for all. The table set before us has the potential to be many things, yet for those of us looking for that previously unrecognized sign, may the table provide what we need for whatever the next step might be. In a few moments, everyone will be invited to take communion, to share in this meal. And at this church, everyone means everyone. All are invited. Those of you in the middle section, we will ask you in a few moments to come forward and take communion. Those on the sides and on the back row, communion will be brought to you. We have different ways of taking communion. There are prepared packets for you if that makes you more comfortable. Please take one and take it back to your seat and partake. For those of you who are willing to take communion by intinction, you simply take the wafer that's offered and dip it into the juice and take the meal. For those of you who need the gluten-free option, it too is here available for you. And for those of you who have offering and tithes, there are baskets down here for that or the red boxes at the doors at the exits. Please join us now in our communion hymn, The Table. I will feast at the table of the Lord. I will feast at the table of the Lord. I won't hunger anymore at His table. I will feast at the table of the Lord. I will feast at the table of the Lord. I won't hunger anymore at His table. Come all you weary, come and find His yoke is easy, His burden light. He is able, He will restore at the table of the Lord. When there is peace at the table of the Lord. There is peace at the table of the Lord. I won't worry anymore at His table. There is healing at the table of the Lord. There is healing at the table of the Lord. I won't suffer anymore at His table. Come on, you weary, come and find His yoke is easy, His 
surprised this morning if everyone hasn't seen this table and everyone who worships with us online hasn't seen this table. But it's our hope this morning that each one of you, each one of us, can see this table in a new light. Each one of us can meet him here at the table in a new light. Will you join us in prayer? Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. You are the same today as you were yesterday and as you are tomorrow. Since the beginning of mankind, you sought to have a relationship with your creation to instruct us in the way that we ought to go. Father, today we pray for discernment. We pray that the Holy Spirit that indwells within us will give us a peace beyond understanding to know precisely when something is you and when something is not. Father, we want to be obedient to your call in our lives. We pray for such discernment to not only make wise choices, but in the course of it all, to know we can trust your guiding hand. We pray these things in your name. Now let us pray the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, betrayed, he met with his disciples in an upper room to celebrate the Passover. During the meal, he took a loaf of bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, for this is my body broken for you. Then he took the cup, he blessed it and shared it with his friends saying, drink all of you. For this represents my blood, the blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you gather in my name, do this in remembrance of me. The table is set and everyone is invited. Please come. Traverse from afar, field and mountain, war and mountain, following yonder far. Star of wonder, star of light, 
Star with roll your beauty bright Westward leading still Proceed and guide us to that perfect light Born a king on Bethlehem's plain Gold I bring to crown him again King forever see Sing never over his soul on high Star of wonder, star of light Star with roll your beauty bright Westward leading still Proceeding guide us to that perfect light Frankincense to offer have I Incense owns a deity nigh Prayer and pleasing voices Raising worshiping God on high Star of wonder, star of light Star of royal beauty bright Westward leading still Proceeding, guide us to that perfect light. Star of wonder, star of light, star of first and beauty bright. Westward leading still, proceeding, guide us to that perfect light. Mary is mine, it's bitter perfume, breeze of life, gathering gloom. Sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, and dying, sealed in stone, cold tomb. Star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, we're westward leading still. Proceeding, guide us to that perfect light. Star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright. Where westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to that perfect light. It talks about a bright light, which kind of goes sort of against my sermon, but that's okay. <laughs> because I will tell you, sometimes that light that no one else sees, no one else notices, it is blinding to you. You see it with such clarity that it is overwhelming, and you just know in that moment, I've got to do this, I've got to go, I've got to be a part of this, whatever it is. Others would be going, what? Huh? I see nothing. And yet it's so compelling. You have to act. My prayer for us this year as a church is an openness, an available spirit, so that when those moments come, when God says, hey, pay attention to what I'm doing, we will see that 
thing that maybe we'd never perceived before and act. A few things I want to lift up in this community at Cypress Creek. Next Saturday night, right here in this space, is the... I'm all, I've been blessed the last 10 years to be able to offer the opening prayer and then to just sit back and enjoy. And they have music and they have uh, theater. They have all kinds of different ways of expressing and celebrating Dr. Martin Luther King. So I'm going to encourage you, 5 o'clock next Saturday evening. Next Sunday. How many services are we going to have next Sunday? One. Good, you got that. What time? So come, be a part of not only the ministry fair, learn about some of the things that are happening in the life of the church, and maybe learn about that new place that God is calling you. So I hope you will be a part of that. And finally, though it's not on the screen, tomorrow the Reverend Mariah Newell returns from parental leave. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Grace and to Jennifer and everybody else who's been stepping in for children and youth ministry. But uh, if you have not yet seen or met Carter, uh, Evan and Mariah's new son, uh, you will look forward to the kid is one of the squirmiest ones I've ever held in my life. Uh, but oh my gosh, they are amazing parents as we knew they would be. And we celebrate that amazing gift coming into the world. So continue to pray for them as those of you who are parents, you remember those days trying to begin to transition back into work and navigate that so be prayerful for them in this time well as we do every sunday we invite people to and maybe traditional hasn't heard this quite as much we invite you to the well yes we have a well one out here one in the forum i'm going to be standing near the well maybe some others will we invite you if you want to come for a word of prayer or maybe you're wanting to know a little bit more about the church. Or maybe you've been really thinking about, how do I connect with this church? How do I align my life with, with this community? Because I'm kind of excited about the values and, and what it means to be a part of a church that's putting love first. We'd love to be in conversation with you. So you can meet me or one of our other folks at the well, and we would love to continue those conversations. And now I'm going to invite you, whether it is in body or spirit or both, to rise as we join together in this song. Come thou fount of every blessing tune the heart to sing the grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious sonnet sing by flaming tongues above sing the mountains I'm fixed upon it Mounts of thy redeeming love Here I raise my Ebenezer Hither by thy help I'm come And I hope by thy good pleasure Safely to arrive at home Jesus bought me when a stranger Wandering from the fold of God He to rescue me from danger Interposed His precious blood
Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. And let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to lead the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. For those of you that were on the back row and maybe didn't get a star, I'm going to bring some back there after we do our closing prayer. I know some of you on the side did not either. You can either come forward or I'll have these at the back and you can snag one there. Let us now join together in our closing prayer that you see. On